So this is just a quick update video on the clean screen version 3 now, which is officially out. This is the very first version, so we're changing back to HSync and VSync, hence for the video. We'll show you the differences now. I've also made a clock booster to help stabilize the P clock, which was a cause of some issues, not many, but some. This helps completely eradicate that as well. And just to kind of show you the basics of the change in install now, with there being quite a few versions between 2 and 3, and experimenting to fix problems. This is now the official version 3, and this is going to be how you install it going forward. And then once we get feedback from yourselves, we'll integrate all these new features into the next version. When you purchase the clean screen, you'll get the clock booster for free. That's just going to come with it as standard. And the install is basically the same. You'll install the flex ribbon as you would. You'll connect up each side of the ribbon. And then what you'll notice is I've got the wires on the LCD pin 9 and pin 20 here, the same as it used to be on version 2, which is H-Sync and V-Sync. So pin 9 is H-Sync. The kit will come with two wires as well, so you don't need to, you know, make wires or find wires. It'll come with the two wires for this. And then it's just a case of tacking on H-Sync, which is LCD pin 9, and V-Sync, which is LCD pin 20. And then due to this board supporting the VA4 and 5 now, if you have the specific version that gets programmed, these two pins, which used to be the color modes, are now for DAT4 and 5. So for this specific release, these two act as color modes and will need to be soldered to ground or 5 volts, which gives you four color modes to choose from. So you solder them both to ground. It's the most common color mode that works on most consoles. But for 90% of boards, you'll just send DAT4 and 5 to any ground pad. And then we might as well put the clock booster on. So this will help stabilize and turn a weak clock into a full 5 volt sharp clock edge. So what we essentially do is instead of connecting straight to this pin here, we'll send the Game Gear's clock into this board and back out to uh, the ribbon. And instead of going to the ribbon, you could go to this pad here so you don't rip the ribbon and then 5 volt and ground to any pad. You can orient this any way you like. I tend to find on the single ASIC version, if you use the short blue wire, and it can connect over to the 5 volt that's down here. So you'll see we've got 5 volt down here. You can pick any 5 volt. You can pick the caps that are 5 volts. But I'm just going to pick this pad here. And that'll sit nicely there then. We'll just put a bit of double-sided tape on to keep it flat. And now you can go ground with the other wire. And I'd say this is recommended for every board. I have noticed pretty much every board on the new clean screen. Due to these level shifters correctly honoring the voltage levels, all my kind of push towards making sure we honor the original standards of the consoles for better compatibility uh, shows up that the clock, uh, because it isn't a CMOS or TTL logic in a sense, it's basically just a, a clock signal, shouldn't really be handled by just a level shifter. It's always worked in the past, but it is the cause of some odd glitching or horizontal lines. So I'd recommend this as standard. And as I mentioned, this is going to get built into version 3.1 anyway, and the ribbon will have the H-Sync and V-Sync on, and the color modes will have switches. So all these revisions in the very next version are going to be integrated once we've confirmed they're all stable and working from feedback from you guys. So the power and ground are on, and now all that's left to do is lift up this peak lock so it's not soldered, like so. And then you want to put a little bit of tape underneath so that you don't end up touching down. So I'm just going to slide Capton tape underneath the ribbon, fold it back over and just stick it down. So that way, we know for a fact this P-clock going to here isn't connected. And then I'm just going to choose to go all the way over here for the P-clock out. Uh, whereas I could have gone to, obviously, the flex ribbon, but as I mentioned, I don't want to rip that pad. So P-clock out then can go on here over to the P-clock. And the last step is just to link the original uh, P clock where the ribbon would have soldered to to the P clock GG. And there's the clock booster now on. So you can see it's all nice and connected. So now let's connect up the screen. And now with the screen connected, let's test Sonic out. And you can see there we have a nice stable screen. Turn the audio down a little bit. 
brightness up and down. So that's the install. It's basically the flex ribbons as normal. We've gone back to H-Sync and V-Sync, which I'll add to this ribbon on the next ribbon version. So you don't have to use the wires, but they come with the kit anyway, so don't worry about that. The color mode is by hardwiring DAT4 and 5 to ground. And if you get colors, say red or green on here, you can try sending DAT5 to ground, DAT4 to 5 volts, or any combination of these two pins being ground or 5 volts to tweak the color shift for the level to be correct. If you do have to change the color mode though, do let me know because on H sync and V sync, I don't think we'll need this color uh, shifting. I think default ground all the time should work. So if nobody has issues and ever needs to send these to a different pin over the course of the next thousand of these we sell, which is this batch, then we don't need to add this color shift option. But this was in here because C sync needed the color shift. But I don't think V sync and H sync will. I've just left it in in case so you can always get the color right. For the clock booster, it's easier to see what it does than explain. So we'll say the original clock here from the Game Gear, you can see has a signal that's, if we get a measurement on so you can see, the peak to peak is 3.5 volts, and it's also offset by about 0.5 volts off ground. So this isn't really a TTL or a CMOS logic. This is literally a sine wave clock, so it doesn't really work correctly for that input. I'll capture that as a reference waveform. So now we can let go and you'll see the waveform stays in the background faded. And if we now see the output after the clock booster, you can see the difference here. We've now got a full zero to five volt clock and the 5.8 volt is just the scope's inability to resolve this fast enough. This is 32 megahertz and the scope isn't exactly that quick. So you've just seen a kind of overshoot. But now you can see how you have a perfect clock and it's the full wave. So this will trigger the shifters correctly. There's also another issue on the clock that's hard to capture where you'll actually see, if we remove the trigger, I might be able to capture the event for you. So you can see the reason for this clock booster as well. If we try to capture a runt measurement, which is something that's out the ordinary from your expected trigger, and then we load in Sonic because this will happen when the console's running. This is basically the cause of some of the horizontal noise that you see on some game gears before I've designed this mod effectively. So while Sonic's running, we'll try and capture the wave that causes the issue. You can see right there for a start, if we pause that now and zoom in, you'll see this little undercut here where the clock hasn't reached the right voltage. So this is where they all typically hit. And then this is the rump measurement underneath that's dropped underneath to 3.7 volts. So these rump measurements here, these underclocks, are what can cause the screen typically to have horizontal lines pulsing. So I'm sure you guys have seen it before, where the screen kind of jitters, where you get horizontal movement. That is that clock jitter. And these runt clock pulses that do happen on most game gears I've seen. And I think until now we've just been lucky because the level shifters used on most screens were tolerant of these kind of differences. Whereas the new shifters I'm using are very tolerant of the expected voltage levels. So hence the need for the clock booster. And this also then solves that issue. So with that installed done, let's take a look at all the new features. You'll see we have a load of new button switches here now. So if we turn the console on and during this install, say the backlight wheel wasn't working and you weren't sure what was going on, you can flick the backlight test switch on and it will always turn this backlight on for you then. So you can test without having to wire the wheel up with the backlight test switch. Let's just load Sonic so you can see this and see if I turn the wheel down so it wouldn't be on typically. But then I turn the backlight test switch on. You can see it then enables the backlight without the need for the wheel. So that's the backlight test switch. The next test is the general screen test. So say the game gear might not be working. The new clean screen doesn't require a game gear even installed. You could literally apply five volts and ground to the clean screen and test the entire screen. So let's say we weren't sure if the game gear is running or if the clean screen's bad. You can now flick the screen test switch. And we recommend also flicking the backlight test switch when you do this, because there you go, you can now see the screen. So this doesn't require then a working wheel or a working game gear. And what you'll get is a border like this. And this color in the middle actually indicates if things are missing. So Let's see this in action. If I turn off, black, by the way, is everything's okay. So if I remove V-Sync, 
and this simulates, say, a bad wire or the console not outputting VSync, you can now see the screens turn green. Green indicates that VSync is missing. If we touch VSync back on, you can see this live updates. So it knows we're not missing VSync now. So this literally tells you if you're missing signals. If we remove HSync, you'll see it turns blue. So it tells you you're missing HSync. If we remove P clock, it will turn red as the most critical warning. You don't even have a clock. If there's a combination of these missing, so we're missing HSync and P clock, it mixes blue and red together, and you end up with purple. If you're missing all three, you'll get a white screen, but with the border around of colors, that means you're missing everything. So any combination of uh, missing values is the combination of the colors mixed together. So blue and green mixed is cyan, which means you're missing V-Sync and H-Sync. Red missing is the clock. All three missing is red, green, and blue mixed, which is white. And you'll find all of these color modes on the wiki. So I'll do a, a written article on what all these color modes mean. But it's basically just diagnostics to help you see if you're missing any signals or not. Say this is fully installed in a console now, and you're not sure if something's gone wrong or if the console's working, you can just hold the console's left start and two button, the one that brings a menu normally. So when this is fully assembled, these are just linked to the buttons. This could be in a complete game gear without having to dismantle it. You can just hold start two and left for about five seconds. And if this wasn't working, then it forces debug mode to open up while those are held. So you can always check that the clean screen is running and working. And then when you let go, debug mode turns off. So you've got a physical switch to enable debug mode. And you've also got a software enable mode where you turn the console on and just hold the three buttons for five seconds to force the debug mode. If you did this for five seconds and you did not see a debug window, either your wheel was bad if you didn't turn on the backlight test or something's gone wrong with the clean screen. You've got indicator lights as well for the voltage rails. So you've got the 5 volt in, the 3.3 out, and the 1.2 out. You've also got a boot light here that tells you that the clean screen code is running. So all those are good indicators as well. And then for those that want scan lines always on, you can flick the third option, which is scan lines on, and it will turn on the vertical scan lines, which were the classic Game Gear scan lines. So that's a third option to forcefully enable scan lines. You can obviously do it in the menu, but the menu doesn't save. So you could open the menu, uh, go across to pixel grid and turn on a pixel grid, you know, to your liking. But because this can't save, there just isn't enough memory in this FPGA to fit the save feature in. You can enable it with a switch here, which was a fairly high request. There's also now the VGA out, which turns on VGA out mode permanently for consoleizing the clean screen. Again, you can do that in the menu. If you wanted to go to the menu and then enable VGA out this way, it would do the same thing. But this is again, say you wanted to consoleize it, you can enable VGA out. So that's really all the new features of the V3. I know the installs got a little bit more complicated while we transition from C-Sync back to H-Sync and V-Sync for more stability, but everything's provided in the kit, so you shouldn't have much issues anyway. And as always, we love feedback, so jump on the Discord and let us know all the feedback of everything that works, if you need to change color modes, and just bear in mind, all this will be installed on the next version of the board. But let us know if you have any more improvements or suggestions or updates on what you'd like to see. I do have a HDMI plus audio board coming, which you can run off the RGB outputs. So you can run VGA or HDMI out. That board will be coming out separately as an add-on because not everybody wants that, but that will fully support HDMI out. So that's it for this one, guys. I'll catch you in the next.